damn everybody and at Sydney's dam. David, what is there? <gasps> a lion. <coughs> Completely unlike those elephants we saw, a lion is capable of doing absolutely nothing for about 20 hours of the day. You think he's a lion? Yes, he's breathing. There he is, he's breathing. Now Craig, who is on the back of Taylor's vehicle, in his first utterance, and quite possibly his only utterance of the day, that he heard lions calling last night, and I wonder if this wasn't one of them. Almost certainly one of the Birmingham boys, and I'm afraid we can't go any closer to him because, well, he's in Biffle's hook. But we'll sit here for the next three or four minutes and see if he doesn't deign to stand up and do something useful. I wonder if there aren't some others. I also can't move around too much here because we are obviously at Sydney's Dam and we're in Wendy, which means that the signal will disappear if I move from this position. But I'm scanning and I can't see Now, on Biffle's Hook, over the last little while, has been the Torchwood Pride. And the Torchwood Pride of seven lionesses and ten youngsters, which I and I think everyone else at Wild Earth has yet to see, is an interesting one because I'm not sure that their territory is covered by the Birmingham boys. There seems to be one very large male with them with a very full mane who's a bit older than these chaps. And he was spotted by Lex Hess, and Lex reckoned that he wasn't one of the Birminghams, but, you know, Lex doesn't spend all the time here, so it's possible it is a Birmingham that has been with them. But I think it's quite interesting that if the Birminghams do not dominate the Torchwood Pride, which occurs off to the east of the Inguhumas and the Styx, the Birminghams, for their size, do not have a very vast number of females. I mean, for their size of coalition, four males, I would imagine them to have at least three prides within their domain. He's being fascinating, isn't he, David? I mean, he really is being quite astounding. First-time viewers must be looking at this thinking, good grief, lions are terrifyingly dangerous. Could you get up and do something, please? It's morning now. Oi! No, that animal is fast asleep. That is the quintessential flat cat. He's got two or three minutes before I get up and leave. Oh, there's another one. They're up. Action stations, everybody. Well, I don't know which Birmingham that is, but I can tell you that their mains are definitely getting darker. We're looking at two more now, David. And we've now got three. Now, we've got some spectacular Twitter names going on here today. I'm now talking to somebody called Ohi Bacon. Hello, Ohi Bacon. You're wondering if I have ever seen a lion eating catfish. Oh, hi, Bacon. I have not ever seen a lion eating catfish. I don't know if they eat catfish. I think they would if they were desperate enough. Leopards, yes. Lions, no. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure they would. They have got um, very unsophisticated palates. You need a sophisticated palate to eat um, catfish, I'm not sure. Good, so we've got three Birminghams here, it looks like to me. Maybe there's a fourth somewhere around. Very nice of them to stick their heads up above the long grass. Now if they would roar, a blast.
obligingly. That would be wonderful. Come on, roar. And if you are a new viewer, I mean, the, first of all, the Birmingham boys are our dominant male coalition out here. And they arrived in the winter of 2015. So they've almost been dominant here for two years. That's amazing to think about, actually. It feels like yesterday that they arrived. And they're probably sitting at around six years old. Very tired all the time, of course, because they dominate our area, which contains, of course, the Inkahuma Pride and the Styx Pride down to the south of where we are. And when I say I'm being a bit sarcastic about the dangers they pose to us, um, but they, I mean, they're certainly not dangerous to us sitting in the vehicle, but they are a terrifying coalition. They have certainly done a huge amount of damage to the lion pride dynamics of this area. Now, we had a question from Michael. I think um, if we could have it again, Megan, just so that I can get it right. I'm just going to call this in on the radio again. Ah, yes, okay, Michael, you're wondering about how lionesses from one pride react to the scent of other prides. I'll tell you that now. Morning. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, what uh, lions, I don't know how they react to the smell of other lions, or, or, you know, strangers, but they, what they do is that they seldom come across each other because they keep such exclusive territories. So the southern boundary of the Inkahuma Pride Territory is roughly runs along the line of Twin Dam, not Twin Dam's, Treehouse Dam, the southern side of that, and then off down to the south into Little Gauri and Hoffmans, and I might draw you a map later if you like. But the northern boundary of the Styx Pride and the southern boundary of the Inkahuma Pride are hardly have any overlap over them at all. And so, yes, I'm sure they do smell the scent of each other and know the st that there are strangers afoot when they're patrolling the boundary, but they hardly ever come across each other. I'm sorry for that slightly garbled message for the game drive. Game drive was going ballistic in my ear again. Somebody called in these lions and then about 35 people decided they'd like to come and see them. I also would like at some stage today to find finally the curry chain button quail, which has been making that noise. <coughs> but very difficult to find in this long grass unless you're actually walking. Well, David, I don't know about you, but um, this is starting to get slightly less than entertaining, so I wonder if we shouldn't perhaps move on. Good. Let us press on.